Now, Edgar Allan Poe was an author that has been greatly admired after his death. A lot of authors have tried to copy him or have been very inspired by him. There have been made many movies, theater plays, pieces of art. Many artists have found great inspiration in Edgar Allan Poe, and he's famous for his grotesque horror story, and he's also seen as the father of the detective story. So he's a brilliant author, but what is it that he does? In this video, we're gonna take a look at literary devices. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Poe's style, his language, and then we'll talk about point of view in this story. Then we'll talk a little bit about creating suspense. How does Edgar Allan Poe make his um, short stories so exciting? And finally, we'll talk about some great symbolism in A Cask of Amontillado. Now let's start by looking at Poe's style, his language. Poe is known to use complex and ornate language. It means elaborate language. He loved words and writes in a romantic fashion with complex vocabulary. But this is really cool. He's not only complex in vocabulary, he's also very poetic. If you look at it closely, you will see that he uses lots of rhyme and alliteration. Alliteration is when letters are used to create a sound pattern. In the opening of the story, he says, I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. If you take a close look at this, you will see the use of alliteration here. I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. And here is another example. Here he uses the S sound. A succession of loud and shrill screams bursting suddenly. So you see, Poe was not only concerned with creating and composing an excellent short story of horror, he also was very concerned with the literary quality of his work. He felt that literature should sound good, it should be like music and written with mathematical precision. So all in all we can conclude and say that Poe's style is very poetic. Many critics and students have pointed to the fun fact that poetic starts with Poe's last name. He's definitely a poetic writer of horror stories. Now let us then turn to point of view. As in most of Poe's stories, we have a first person point of view. It gives us a subjective view if we only see one side of the story. And as in many of his tales of criminal insanity, we have to ask ourselves, is this narrator reliable? And as always, he's not really reliable. And the reason for this is his insanity. He's insane and unstable. And one of the reasons we understand this is that he opens by claiming his sanity. But then he goes on to meticulously tell us how he carried out his murder. And as readers, we eventually understand that he must be mad. He must be insane. Now, the other reason that we cannot really trust the narrator is that there is no proof of wrongdoing. He doesn't tell us what Fortunato has done. So Montresor makes himself both jury judge, and in this case, executioner. So I guess it's safe to say that we cannot trust the narrator. Also, the insanity of the narrator, of course, creates suspense. It makes us want to keep reading, and we're wondering what this man is capable of doing. Now let's turn to Poe's way of creating suspense. One thing is the narrator being mad. Another thing is what we call foreshadowing. Foreshadowing means hints of what will come. In origin, we call it from Peg. And there are many foreshadowings in this story. In the beginning, he is very obvious. He says, my smile now was at the thought of his death. This is a very clear foreshadowing, which makes the reader expect something horrible to happen. But he also has ironic and less obvious foreshadowing. For instance, when Fortunato says, I shall not die of a cough. True, true, I replied, because the narrator, of course, knows that he will die of dehydration and starvation in the crypt. And then there is Montresor's coat of arm, which is obviously a foreshadowing. The shield features a human foot crushing a serpent, and it says that no one will hurt us without being punished. And of course, in this story, 
The serpent represents Fortunato, and the foot that crushes him is Montresor. Now, the talk of masonry also foreshadows events. Fortunato asks whether he's a mason, and here Montresor answers with a visual pun. He shows him his trowel, which means that he is a real stonesman, that is, he constructs things out of stones and mortar, namely in this story, Fortunato's grave. So lots of great foreshadowing that creates suspense because it makes us understand that something horrible will happen. Now, he also uses many sensory images that makes the story creepy and uncomfortable. He describes the catacombs in detail, the smell, the damp, the nitre on the wall and the darkness. It makes the reader uncomfortable. And I also want you to notice something great. At the end of the story, at the climax, when he's building the wall, and we realize that we're moving towards a terrible ending, he uses sounds to enhance that creepy feeling. After Fortunato is shut in, there was a long moaning cry from the deep. And then there was silence. A little later, vibration of the chain was the only sound. In fact, Montresor sits down to enjoy this sound and to enjoy the moment. Then next, there is a succession of shrill screams. And I reply to his yells and it echoed and now they're screaming at each other, lots of noise. Then there is laughter and again, complete silence. And the scene is ended with only one sound, the jingling of the bells. So you see here that Poe creates suspension through sound imagery and sensory images.